50 full efficiently CSCS mock test questions. Question 1. Give two separate answers as to how excess noise can affect your health. A. Loss of hearing. B. Constant ear infections. C. In excess buildup of wax in your ears. D. Persistent headaches. E. A condition known as vibration white finger. Correct answer is A. Loss of hearing. D. Persistent headaches. Question 2. All of the following statements are true about using podium steps except A. You must ensure the wheels are locked before getting on. B. Podiums are 100% safe and cannot topple over. C. Like all other equipment podiums must be inspected regularly. D. Podiums can topple over so you must take care when reaching sideways. Correct answer is, B. Podiums are 100% safe and cannot topple over. Question 3. What should you do if you notice a safety hazard that no one else seems to notice? A. Stay away from that area. B. Report it to your supervisor immediately. C. Keep on working and report it at the end of your shift. D. It's not your responsibility to report this. Correct answer is, B. Report it to your supervisor immediately. Question 4. As an employee it's your responsibility to do all the following except, choose two answers. A. Raise concerns about safety issues. B. Write your own assessments. C. Report unsafe working practices. D. Provide your own PPE. Correct answer is, B. Write your own risk assessments. D. Provide your own PPE. Question 5. What should you do if you accidentally drop your safety helmet and crack it? A. Get another one immediately. B. Wait until your break and get another one. C. Carry on working if it's only a small crack. D. Wait until the end of your shift and get another one for the next day. Correct answer is, A. Get another one immediately. Question 6. You witness a near miss and the worker involved is afraid of getting into trouble what should you do? A. Have a chat with him and ask him to be careful next time. B. Report it. C. He seems okay so all is fine. D. Take him to your supervisor immediately. Correct answer is, B. Report it. Question 7. Which of these must you do if you're required to use an extension cable? Choose two answers. A. You must only uncoil the length you need to use. B. You must uncoil the entire cable. C. Check the entire length and cable connectors for damage. D. You must only check the length you need for damage. Correct answer is, B. You must uncoil the entire cable. C. Check the entire length and cable connectors for damage. Question 8. What should you do if the extension wire you need to use has a cut in the outer cover? A. Report it immediately and make sure no one else uses it. B. Carry on using it but avoid going near the cut part. C. Use electrical tape to cover it and then carry on working. D. If you can't see the copper wires inside then carry on using it. Correct answer is. A. Report it immediately and make sure no one else uses it. Question 9. Which class of fire does magnesium and aluminium materials fall under? A. Class D. B. Class B. C. Class A. D. Class F. Correct answer is, A. Class D. Question 10. What should you do if you need to use a mobile tower scaffold but the wheel brakes aren't working? A. Ask a colleague to hold the tower while you work. B. Carry on using it only if the floor is level. C. Use a rock or a piece of wood to wedge the wheels and stop them from moving. D. Do not use it. Correct answer is, D. Do not use it. Question 11. What should you do if you're unsure about a particular topic discussed during a site induction? A. Ask a colleague to clarify. B. Meet with the presenter at the end of the day to discuss it. C. Ask the presenter to explain further. D. 
Ask your health and safety rep to explain at your next break. Correct answer is C. Ask the presenter to explain further. Question 12. Why is it important for you to keep your working environment clean and tidy? A. To prevent rats and other animals that could spread diseases. B. To reduce the risk of slips, trips and falls. C. To reduce environmental side effects. D. All of these. Correct answer is D. All of these. Question 13. Which of these must you do if you need to run an electrical cable across an area used by vehicles? Choose two answers. A. Ensure that you use yellow tape to wrap it as this would make it visible to drivers. B. Use spare wood or scaffold bores to cover the cable. C. Use a protective ramp to cover the cable. D. Put up a ramp ahead sign. Correct answer is C. Use a protective ramp to cover the cable. D. Put up a ramp ahead sign. Question 14. You are required to undertake some work that will produce dust. What will you need to do? A. Only work for a short period of time. B. Avoid the work, as dust can harm your respiratory system. C. Begin working immediately, dust is hardly dangerous. D. Wear the correct personal protective equipment, PPE, and use devices that will control airborne dust. Correct answer is D. Wear the correct personal protective equipment, PPE, and use devices that will control airborne dust. Question 15. In the event of a fire you should do all the following except A. Tackle the fire if safe and train to do so. B. Operate the nearest fire alarm. C. Call the fire brigade. D. Exit the building immediately using the nearest lift. Correct answer is D. Exit the building immediately using the nearest lift. Question 16. What should you do if the toilet on your work site doesn't work and is always in a messy state? A. Avoid using the toilet. B. Investigate and try to fix the problem. C. Leave the site on your break and use the toilet in a nearby shop. D. Speak to your supervisor about the problem. Correct answer is D. Speak to your supervisor about the problem. Question 17. What is the leading cause of death among construction workers? A. Being hit by vehicles on site. B. Leptospirosis. C. Falling from height. D. Electrocution. Correct answer is C. Falling from height. Question 18. Prohibition notices are given to equipment that A. Only supervisors can use. B. Only managers can use. C. Only skilled workers can use. D. Should not be used until it's made safe. Correct answer is D. Should not be used until it's made safe. Question 19. In the event of an accident, a first aider can do all the following except A. Perform CPR. B. Bandage your cuts or wounds. C. Move you while you're unconscious. D. Prescribe and give you medicines to help you recover. Correct answer is D. Prescribe and give you medicines to help you recover. Question 20. What two methods can you use to reduce the amount of dust from becoming airborne? A. Place a dust collector on the machine. B. Wear a protective mask. C. Keep your area neat. D. Work carefully and slowly. E. Wet cutting. Correct answer is A. Place a dust collector on the machine. E. Wet cutting. Question 21. High levels of dust can be inhaled when performing tasks such as grinding, drilling, sanding and cutting. These levels are most dangerous when A. Working in a small room. B. Using the tool in a large, indoor area. C. Working outdoor on a calm day. D. Using the tool outside when it is windy. Correct answer is A. Working in a small room. Question 22. A risk assessment is important because A. It tells you who is in charge of health and safety at your work site. B. 
It is used to delegate tasks among workers. C. It tells you where tools should be stored. D. It identifies hazards and tells you the safest way of performing a task. Correct answer is D. It identifies hazards and tells you the safest way of performing a task. Question 23. What should you do if the guard from a power tool you need to use is missing? A. Improvise and make your own. B. Carry on using it but be very careful and work very slowly. C. Use the tool as fast as you can to complete the task quickly. D. Do not use the tool unless you get the correct guard fitted. Correct answer is D. Do not use the tool unless you get the correct guard fitted. Question 24. Before starting your shift you're given a dust mask that's too big and keeps falling off. What should you do? A. Ask for a mask that fits securely and wait until you have the correct RPE before starting. B. Ask your colleague to borrow his mask then carry on working. C. Carry on working and get another one after your shift ends. D. Carry on working with the big mask until you can get another one. Correct answer is A. Ask for a mask that fits securely and wait until you have the correct RPE before starting. Question 25. Hand arm vibration syndrome or vibration white finger can be described as A. A severe rash on your arm that's caused by exposure to hazardous substances. B. A sign that your hands are on the way to becoming permanently injured. C. An airborne disease that can affect your breathing. D. Frostbite that can lead to permanent damage to your arms and fingers. Correct answer is B. A sign that your hands are on the way to becoming permanently injured. Question 26. Disposable masks should be used no more than A. 7 working days. B. 9 working days. C. 1 day or 1 shift. D. 10 working days. Correct answer is C. 1 day or 1 shift. Question 27. After raising a fire alarm what's the next thing you should do? A. Hide under a desk. B. Find your supervisor and inform of the situation. C. Find your colleagues and take them out the building. D. Leave the building immediately. Correct answer is D. Leave the building immediately. Question 28. Hazardous substances can be identified by A. The symbol on the label. B. The color of the container. C. The color of the substance. D. It will have a blue label on the container. Correct answer is A. The symbol on the label. Question 29. Which of these statements is true about using ladders? A. Only one person should work on a ladder. B. Two people can work on the same ladder if it is long enough. C. Two people can work on the same ladder if the supervisor approves. D. Two people can work on the same ladder only if someone else holds the ladder. Correct answer is A. Only one person should work on a ladder. Question 30. For maximum protection when using a mask you should A. Ensure you're using the correct type of mask for the job. B. Ensure you're wearing the mask correctly. C. Ensure you've passed a face fit test for that specific mask. D. All of these answers. Correct answer is D. All of these answers. Question 31. What should you do if you discover a child wandering around on a construction site? A. Escort the child to safety immediately. B. Just ignore it as it's not your problem. C. Find your supervisor and report it. D. Find your site manager and report it. Correct answer is A. Escort the child to safety immediately. Question 32. You have just finished working with a particularly noisy piece of equipment and you have a ringing in your ears. What does this symptom imply? A. Your body has been exposed to excess vibration. B. You may be coming down with the flu or a respiratory infection. C. The level of noise was high, but it was still safe. D. You've temporarily damaged your hearing. Correct answer is D. 
You've temporarily damaged your hearing. Question 33. Using eye protection is vital for on-site safety. When should you wear eye protection? A. Only when you're working with power tools. B. Only when you're working with hazardous chemicals. C. When the task has a potential for eye injury and if the site rules demand it. D. Only when your eyes come into direct sunlight. Correct answer is, C. When the task has a potential for eye injury and if the site rules demand it. Question 34. You believe that excess noise at the job site has damaged your hearing what do you need to do? A. Take a few sick days and rest. B. Have your doctor or employer arrange a hearing test for you. C. Place cotton wads in your ears to prevent any future damage. D. There is nothing that you can do the damage is permanent and cannot be undone correct answer is, B. Have your doctor or employer arrange a hearing test for you. Question 35. Why are site inductions important? A. The work site health and safety rules are discussed during the site induction. B. It gives you the opportunity to formally meet your colleagues. C. It allows you to have a look around at the work site. D. It gives you the opportunity to meet the site manager and supervisors. Correct answer is, A. The work site health and safety rules are discussed during the site induction. Question 36. What chemical fire extinguishers are identified by which color? A. Red. B. Black. C. Blue. D. Yellow. Correct answer is, D. Yellow. Question 37. Protective midsoles in your safety footwear are designed to A. Prevent you from twisting your ankle. B. Prevent chemical burns if you step on hazardous chemicals. C. Ensure your footwear remains comfortable throughout the day. D. Protect your feet from nails and other sharp objects. Correct answer is D. Protect your feet from nails and other sharp objects. Question 38. What should you do if the ladder you're about to use is damaged? A. Carry on using the ladder but stay away from the damaged section. B. Try to fix the ladder yourself. C. Put the ladder in a corner and leave it there. D. Stop using it, report it and let your colleagues know the ladder is not safe. Correct answer is, D. Stop using it, report it and let your colleagues know the ladder is not safe. Question 39. Over time, excess noise can damage your hearing which of these is an early sign of this? A. Infections of the inner ear. B. There are no early signs. C. A rash may appear around the outside of your ear. D. A ringing sound or even a temporary hearing loss may occur. Correct answer is, D. A ringing sound or even a temporary hearing loss may occur. Question 40. Over time, excess noise can damage your ability to hear. Can such a condition be reversed? A. Yes, but you will be forced to change your current job. B. With time, the condition may repair itself. C. The damage is permanent and cannot be reversed. D. You will need surgery to repair your hearing loss. Correct answer is, C. The damage is permanent and cannot be reversed. Question 41. Which of these two types of fire extinguishers are most suitable for use on electrical fires? Choose two answers. A. Water. B. Foam. C. Wet chemical. D. CO2. E. Dry powder. Correct answer is, D. CO2. E. Dry powder. Question 42. When does your employer need to provide a first aid box? A. When the total number of employees exceeds 10. B. When the total number of employees exceeds 35. C. Every site should be equipped with a first aid box regardless of the number of employees. D. First aid boxes are provided at the company's discretion and are not compulsory. Correct answer is, C. Every site should be equipped with a first aid box regardless of the number of employees. Question 43. 
What should you do if you're given a task that requires you to wear a full body harness but you've never used one before? A. Carry on and try to work it out yourself. B. Ask a colleague who wears one for advice. C. Ask for an expert to train you. D. Ask for the instruction manual and figure it out yourself. Correct answer is, C. Ask for an expert to train you. Question 44. When using water to help control levels of dust when cutting, what should you do? A. Make certain that you are using as much water as possible. B. Pour water onto a surface before you begin cutting. C. Ask a co-worker to stand next to you and pour water directly onto your workspace. D. Make sure that the flow of water is adjusted correctly. Correct answer is, D. Make sure that the flow of water is adjusted correctly. Question 45. If you need to operate a power tool you must be. A. Trained and competent. B. At least 16 years old. C. At least 18 years old. D. At least 21 years old. Correct answer is, A. Trained and competent. Question 46. Being exposed to engine oil can cause A. Hearing problems. B. Skin problems. C. Lung cancer. D. Temporary loss of breath. Correct answer is B. Skin problems. Question 47. You need to sweep up dust that was created during your shift. A. Place a protective mask over your nose and mouth. B. Ensure that there has adequate ventilation. C. Dampen down the area. D. All of these. Correct answer is, D. All of these. Question 48. All unsafe working practices should be reported immediately. Whose responsibility is it to report unsafe working practices? A. Your supervisor only. B. Only the site manager can do this. C. Only a health and safety rep can do this. D. It's everyone's responsibility to report unsafe working practices. Correct answer is, D. It's everyone's responsibility to report unsafe working practices. Question 49. To help prevent injuries caused by manual handling you should do all the following except. A. Learn proper lifting and carrying techniques. B. Use lifting equipment. C. Disperse your items into smaller loads. D. Carry as much items as possible to get the task completed faster. Correct answer is, D. Carry as much items as possible to get the task completed faster. Question 50. Wearing a safety helmet in hot weather can be uncomfortable. Which of these is true about wearing a safety helmet in hot weather? A. You can drill small holes in your helmet to increase airflow and keep you cool. B. You can take it off for short periods of time while you're working. C. You must keep it on at all times and ensure you're wearing it correctly. D. You can wear it sideways if it's more comfortable this way. Correct answer is, C. You must keep it on at all times and ensure you're wearing it correctly. Question 1. Give two separate answers as to how excess noise can affect